of 2019 we saw overall this is across segments as you can see here overall 38 percent of operators said that yes they featured mocktails on their uh, menu which is an, quite an increase it's a 12 point increase from what we saw when we asked the question just two years earlier now what's also interesting when you look at this is the dramatic increases that we're seeing across, across restaurants and also um, lodging is seeing a, an explosion of mocktails on the menus today. Where we see there hasn't been a tremendous change is in the non-commercial segments. Education, business and industry and healthcare actually dropped a little bit. But that's what we want to talk about today because this trend is not going away. So we want non-commercial operators to understand how you can apply it within your operations because there are absolutely opportunities for mocktails, whether it be uh, during the morning snacking day part or during catering opportunities. There's many opportunities throughout the day that we're going to talk about. So this, um, what I'm going to show you now is a video from one particular operator. He um, operates several restaurants across the Chicago area um, that focus in on local and um, farm in-season foods. And he's going to talk a little bit about what he has seen the uh, regarding the mocktail trend. So the idea behind Farm Bar is a local restaurant where people can come all the time. Anyone who's been paying attention to the industry has seen what's been going on in recent years. You know, uh, 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 our guests' consumption patterns has, has changed steadily since we opened our first restaurant in 2011. Back then, we opened up with 28 Midwestern craft beers on draft. That has evolved. Cocktails have become a bigger part of the business. Wine has come a little bit more to the forefront. But we've also seen another trend where people are looking to drink less liquor, less alcohol. And that's for a variety of reasons. A lot of them having to do around health, a lot around self-control. And uh, what I've been told from my friends in states like Colorado that I can expect a further uh, depression of alcohol sales uh, due to the impact of legalization of cannabis. Okay, so we wanted to show you, you know, the perspective of a restaurant operator because that really is where we're seeing the trend exploding. They are seeing more and more that the clients that come into their restaurants are, are looking for mocktails and are less interested in alcoholic beverages than they had been in the past. Um, he hasn't seen his traffic decline. He's just seeing his alcohol sales decline. So they want to make sure they're still, you know, increasing their check averages and, and capturing these consumers. So they saw mocktails as an opportunity. Now, um, and we're going to see a little bit more about their mocktail uh, program later in the presentation. So you heard TJ, he's, he's the uh, owner of that, those restaurants, talk about the fact that it's really being driven by health. And the consumers that we surveyed just in February last month um, echoed that statement. So we asked them, what are the primary reasons you choose to order a mocktail? Um, among those who did so in the last 90 days. And you can see there's a whole variety of reasons. They were able to check more than one reason that they might have made that choice. But top of the list is that they believe it is a healthier choice versus ordering something with alcohol. Um, we also see further down on the list, their alcoholic beverages are higher in calories. Um, and so you're seeing that in general, they, they feel it's a healthier choice for them. But nearly as high at 30%, so just one point lower, is mocktails are fun. And so that's what we really want you to take away from this presentation today, is an understanding that mocktails aren't just about having an al alcoholic alter or non-alcoholic alternative. It's not just about having soda on the menu or a lemon in on the menu. It's about having something that feels like a celebration. It allows them to feel like they're not missing out. They're still celebrating the occasion with their friends, but they're doing so in a way that they can 
feel good about because it doesn't have the alcohol. And we're gonna go even deeper into this trend in just a moment. But I really wanted to point out, while 31% say it's health, 30% say I ordered it just because it's fun. So there's that element of celebration that is so critical when you're planning a mocktail program. Um, and then some others that are up at the top of the list are not a surprise, one being concern about consuming before driving. And then finally, I want something more light and refreshing, or it just paired well with the food that I was eating. 20% cho chose that as their option or reason for picking it. So if health is a real big driver of this trend, what does health mean to these consumers? I'm sure you've heard a lot, of, you know, and this is something you're thinking about all the time, what does healthy mean to our consumers? And you may have a definition of health that's a lot stricter that you have to follow. But in the minds of consumers, we want you to understand that their definition of health is evolving. We've seen a lot of talk about natural and organic and, um, you know, becoming more part of healthy, fresh becoming more their definition of healthy versus things like low fat, low sodium, because they want to enjoy the food. They want to enjoy the taste and terms like organic and natural and things like that give them that permission. Mocktails is kind of similar in that way. Now they're taking that definition even further today. Beyond just being good for me physically, they also believe that mocktails are a good choice because health is more about more than just your physical health. It's about more than your body. For today's consumers, and especially younger consumers, when you're looking at millennials and Generation Z, they increasingly think about their body and their soul, their relational health and their, their mental health as part of the entire story. And because of that, overindulgence is, is really kind of becoming less acceptable than it had been with prior generations. And we're seeing a lot of uh, social influencers talk about that. Sober curiosity. This is really the term that's becoming uh, used more often by these generations. They say, I'm sober curious. So we actually took to, to Instagram to look at um, hashtags that were being used, and we found Instagram hashtags for sober curious, there were 69,000 individual posts that we found. Um, then you go to some of these others, which I can't say in a professional setting, but we've got uh, you know 329,000 posts. Sober Saturday, 32,000. Sober is sexy, 543,000. And then sober life, 1.3 million posts with that hashtag. So increasingly, we're seeing Generation Z and millennials being proud to talk about the fact that they're sober curious and they're challenging each other to find ways to get together and have fun without alcohol being part of the equation. And we see influencers really get on in on this too. Um, we did a Generation Z study last year and one of the things that we found really fascinating is when you compare Generation Z to millennials and Gen X and all the generations after them, and we looked at what influences them on where, where they decide to eat. And their friends was number one, probably uh, not a surprise to you, but social influencers came up really high on the list as well. And when you got to parents, especially when we were looking at younger kids, kids that were like tween age today, parents still came way down on the list. So younger consumers today are feeling more empowered and a lot of that is because of their access to smartphones and their ability to control um, where they get information and how much information is available to them and have more of a say in the decision. So it's not really a surprise to see that as social influencers start talking about sober curious, we see more um, of the younger generations that are dining out being uh, curious ab about the movement. And it's really about remaining in the moment. So in the past, consumers would think of alcohol as um, really kind of functioning as a facilitator. It facilitated good times. If we go out and drink, we're gonna have a good time. They're starting to switch that opinion. Now there are still people who are going out and drinking, obviously, and there are still people who are, you know, but they might be choosing to drink less or not drink at all um, because they wanna be present. They believe that alcohol actually detracts from their ability to have fun, make connections, be mentally present in the moment, and uh, make memories. We used to think, oh, we make memories when we drink. 
increasingly people are saying, I can't remember when I drink. I want to remember. I want to be present in the moment. Um, and so social activism is playing a part. We see that um, they're more interested in, in uh, personal and societal issues and discussing that with their friends. And again, alcohol can be seen as a hindrance to that rather than a facilitator. So how is it playing out on menus? What's happening at restaurants today? So we looked at some chain restaurants to kind of see how this is playing out. And um, because, you know, a lot of the forward thinking restaurants have been doing it for a while, like Farm Bar that you saw earlier, but we're starting to see it at the chain level as well. California Pizza Kitchen has introduced a line of mocktails. This was a limited time offer that they did recently. Um, the Blood Orange Sparkler, they did this back in spring of 2019, and then they followed it with a watermelon sparkler and a peach sparkler. So each quarter, they're featuring a different drink, and they're made with sparkling waters. This one in particular, uh, a Perrier lemon sparkling water with blood orange flavor, cranberries, and orange juice. So not really um, a lot of unique ingredients there, but combining them in, the way, in a way that feels special to the consumer that's going into the restaurant. Sonic, so looking at the quick service world, even Sonic's getting in on the act. This is summer of 2019. Sonic Drive-In featured their mocktail slushies on their limited time offer menu. Um, they described it as three irresistible flavors, strawberry daiquiri, pina colada, and the Carolina Reaper spicy margarita. So this, um, that actually is, is dipping a toe into a trend we're going to talk about in a moment of spicy flavors making its way into mocktails as well. But they took some pretty um, familiar cocktails and found a way to do it without the alcohol. So people can come to Sonic but order something that felt special. And then even beyond restaurants, we're starting to see um, some places bring this into the operation. So Beatrix, now this is a cafe on the Northwestern Hospital campus. It is run by a restaurant group, but it's designed for the campus of the hospital, so outpatient as well as the doctors. And they um, feature what they call juice cocktails. And really all they are is a mixture of di different juices. One in particular, um, it features apple juice, pomegranate juice, and ginger. And they combine those three juices and charge $6.50 for it. And it's selling like gangbusters. So here's something that feels a little special. They serve it all day long um, from morning and, until they close in the evening. And they have four different uh, drinks on the menu at any time of the, of the cocktails. Um, I should also mention uh, briefly, it, beyond Beatrix, we've also seen some, a lot of B&I and colleges starting to use mocktails as mixers. So if they have professional development opportunities or networking events, we're seeing a lot of um, mocktails making their way into those. So people aren't making mistakes in these kind of mix. mix mixers that might occur if alcohol is introduced into the mix. And then finally, um, nursing homes. We've even seen there's uh, Sedgwick Plaza in Kansas. They have introduced um, a mocktail hour. So they've always had cocktail hours, but they're now they're mixing into their monthly calendar mocktail hours. For those who maybe aren't comfortable drinking cocktails, they still want them to have something special that's fun. So there are definitely ways <clears throat> excuse me, that we're seeing operators incorporate these um, in beyond restaurant or non-commercial segments. So let's talk about um, what's leading. We used our menu tool. We, have a, we track thousands of menus on an ongoing basis, and we're able to track what flavors are, are trending over time. And the most common mocktail ingredients today, whether you're looking at non-commercial or restaurants, are pretty familiar ingredients, things that you may very well already have in your operation. You know, lemon juice, lime juice, strawberry, pineapple, orange juice, ginger, um, or ginger beer is a very common one we're increasingly seeing used, or ginger ale, um, syrup, so simple syrup or flavored syrups, mango and coconut. So those are the most common flavors today and an easy place for most places to start because it's something you've already got. Um, and here's what's trending. So trending, what you see there on top is Seedlip. I don't know if there's anybody in the room here who's familiar with Seedlip. 
It's actually a brand name. Seedlip is a brand of non, it's, it's a alcohol substitute. It's a gin substitute. So here's a way for someone who's currently making cocktails with alcohol to find an ingredient to just sub out the gin and sub in Seedlip. Tastes just like gin, but it doesn't have any alcohol. It's zero proof. So zero proof alcohols are really beginning to trend, but you don't even need to go there to have a really exciting cocktail program. A lot of the other things that are trending are, are juices, lemon juice, grapefruit juice, ginger beer that I mentioned earlier, up 43% over the last 12 months um, on menus. Tonic, um, mint, cranberry juice. So again, these are things that aren't really that out of the ordinary, but are trending on mocktail menus. And it's when you put these things in combination that it really makes something that feels special. Looking ahead, what do we expect to see? We're starting to see the start of big, bold flavors and especially spice in mocktail programs. Um, we see it at restaurants. So what you see on the screen there is an example of Punch Bowl Social. It's a jalapeno cucumber lime aid. So, and it's rimmed with, um, with a spicy uh, habanero cayenne rim. So, Hot, spicy, tangy, tart, these are flavors we expect to see a lot more of on menus. I just showed you an example from Punch Bowl Social, but remember earlier we saw Sonic, a QSR, actually getting into this as well with that Carolina Reaper mocktail that they had, their slush. So expect to see a lot more spice being added into mocktails. And then Asian inspiration. We're seeing Asian inspiration across menus, um, whether it be entrees or appetizers, and we're seeing it in mocktails as well. Uh, we're seeing everything from milk teas, a lot more uh, turmeric and ginger on the menu. Um, what you see there is an example from a restaurant in California, Tan Cha, um, a matcha tea with cheese foam. Is anyone here familiar with cheese foam? We, we've got one person in the room familiar. Now this one, I think, you know, we've done some LTO testing because we were curious about cheese foam. The American consumer, most people don't know what it is yet. But we definitely are starting to see it pop on, on menus and it's taken the global stage by storm. So it's something we're likely to start seeing more of here. It is um, milk and cream cheese whipped together and placed on top of the beverages. So, you know, it's not that unlike what you're seeing Starbucks do with their cold foam, which is made out of egg yolk today. It's really just kind of the next generation of that. So these are some of the things we expect to see uh, coming into mocktails. And then we also see a lot more um, opportunities with dry January. So let's talk about dry January for a moment. This is um, the month of January has become sort of a moment to recover from the holidays where you've overindulged, you drank too much, you ate too much, people wanna feel better after the holidays. So dry January has started to take off. We did Google search to understand what that trend looks like and you can see the number of people searching it in 2016 versus 2020. It actually has doubled since 2018. So in the last two years, the number of people searching dry January as a topic on, on Google doubled. So. This is something that's beginning to catch on. It's something that's a great promotional opportunity and an opportunity to try out a mocktail menu. I know it seems really far away at this point, but something to think about for next January is how can you help consumers uh, to try this trend? We even see Heineken getting into the dr January dry pack. This was samples that they introduced in January, but they're going big on zero proof beer in uh, 2020. They have committed $50 million to advertise this new product and are giving away 10 million samples this year. So they are going big into 0.0, .0 you know, proof uh, beer and believe that this sober curious movement is here to stay and they wanna be part of it. So how do we give people the taste they love without the alcohol? So mocktails, a trend that is not going anywhere, but we'll also beginning to begin to see more zero proof um, traditionally alcohol products coming into the market as well. So zero proof spirits, this is seed lip that I mentioned to you earlier. Um, that's the brand name of this gin alternative. 
But there's another one out there too called Ritual that's really beginning to pop up on, on a lot of menus. Between uh, Seedlip actually doubled its presence on menu in the last 12 months when we looked. Their, their penetration on menus has doubled. Um, from 2018 to 2020, consumers said if offered, I'd like to try a mocktail that tastes like it contains alcohol. So that's these kind of products like Seed Lip and um, Ritual. Products that taste like the cocktail, whether it be a um, Moscow Mule is, a, is one we see a lot, or gin tonic, but using products like this. So what do bartenders think about all this? You'd think they're getting a little nervous, a little weary of the fact that their livelihoods could be in danger here. The reality is, obviously, you know, alcohol is not going away. People are still going to go out and enjoy celebrating. But they recognize that this is an opportunity to capture some of those other folks who maybe weren't comfortable going to, to the bar with their friends in the past. This is actually a, a traffic driver for them. So they're still going to get the person who's drinking alcohol, but maybe some more of their friends will come along with them. The ones that want to be able to, don't want to miss out, want to be able to be part of the um, occasion without feeling pressured to drink alcohol. So 79% of operators say mocktails or, or bartenders that we surveyed um, in our Beyond the Bar study last year told us that mocktails are a hot drink trend in the bar scene. And as I told you earlier, if a hospital can charge $6.50 for juice, it's not uncommon to see bars with $10, $12 mocktails on the menu. So there is an opportunity to charge the same as you would for an alcoholic cocktail for these items. Hi, I'm Lizzie Fryer, Senior Research Manager of Menu at Technomic. And today we're at Farm Bar in the Edgewater neighborhood of Chicago. Being a gastropub, it's no surprise that Farm Bar has an extensive adult beverage menu, but they're also known for their unique mocktail program. And why? Well, according to Technomic Research, about half of consumers say that they're likely to order a mocktail when dining out, and 46% have done so in the last 90 days. Now, mocktails aren't anything new, but the trend has recently progressed to include these zero-proof spirits that are paired with juices and other mixers. And Farm Bar has jumped on the trend. Let's check out these drinks. Uh, my name is Lindsay Anderson, and I'm the lead bartender here at Farm Bar Edgewater. So one of our specialty only made here uh, zero-proof cocktails is the Less Rick More Tea for all of you Rick and Morty fans. Um, it uses Ritual Gin Alternative along with apples, blood orange cordial, uh, some lime juice, and some soda water. Come out to Farm Bar in Edgewater to taste the trend. So how can you capture this opportunity within your own operations and within non-commercial settings? As I mentioned earlier, it's not about having a non-alcoholic alternative. That's only a piece of it. It's not enough to just have Diet Coke or uh, lemonade on the menu. This is about um, making occasions feel special. That's really what these consumers are looking for. They don't want that fear of missing out. It's letting them choose something that feels celebratory but still feel good about the choice that they make. Feel like they're being present, feel like they're having fun, and feel like they're doing something healthy for their body as well as their relationships. Remember we talked about relational health as well as their spiritual or mental health. Um, and so that, that's really the first key is understanding what the trend is and that's not enough just to have something that's not alcoholic. Make it feel special and um, do it by starting with those, those safe flavors that we talked about earlier, those leading flavors, the lemon juice, the lime juice, strawberry, um, orange. Those are some of the things that we saw that are very popular today. Coconut, those are flavors that people are familiar with, flavors that you very likely already have in your operation and can use to make some really exciting combinations of, of drinks. Um, 
But then if you really want to get people excited, and especially if you're talking about uh, college and university students, there is an area where you can start looking at some of those trending flavors, whether it be swapping out orange juice for blood orange juice, or whether it's swapping or in one of those um, zero proof alcohols as an alternative and letting them have a different type of Moscow mule. At the University of Denver, they actually um, had a student-run company pop up last year, uh, Mile High Mocktails. And this student organization was frustrated by the fact that there was no easy way for them to be able to enjoy cocktails with their friends that didn't have alcohol. So they started up this company where people could Instagram them, make orders for Moscow mules or gin and tonics that didn't contain alcohol, and then they sometimes do specialty drinks, and then people would Venmo them the money and they would deliver it to their dorm. So. There are students who are interested in these types of things. So whether you, um, you know, have somewhere a lounge type area where you can incorporate these types of items, or whether you use it for those professional development or mixer type um, functions, there's an opportunity to bring in mocktails. And then we also see from restaurants that are doing it on their brunch menus or the hospital cafes and things like that, or even Starbucks. If you haven't seen the pink drink, it's coconut water and, um, and strawberries. And they love it. Uh, the, it's really big with high school students and college students. So these are types of drinks that are really similar to like mocktail that you could bring into your operation to capture people for morning snack, breakfast, lunch, afternoon snack. There are a lot of opportunities to get these into the menu. Um, same thing with uh, B&I or even a hospital location. Think about the drinks that at Sonic, the mocktail slushies. Think about the Starbucks drinks like the pink drink or the refreshers. And think about a way you can do something similar on your menu to capture this trend. Um, so what ingredients are already in your kitchen? What juices do you have? There are lots of great sites out there that you can go to get recipes, lots of manufacturer sites, um, as well as just food sites that have, if you type in mocktails, you'll be shocked at the number of recipe ideas that come up for you to take advantage of using ingredients that you likely already have in your operation today. And then think about the personality of the menu. Think about doing theme days, or think about if you're doing Asian on the menu one day, is that a chance to do a bubble tea or an Asian-inspired mocktail? There are a lot of really fun ways to make it feel even more like an occasion by um, doing a theme day or making sure that it matches the items on your menu that day. And then you know, think about any venue you have or any occasion that really could be enhanced with this experience. So do you have cafes on site that should be offering mocktails throughout the day? So there's another cold beverage option beyond iced lattes. Do you have catering uh, in your operation where you could look to add this as another way for people to celebrate that's not alcoholic beverages? Or maybe it's just more appropriate because it is a professional function where sometimes alcohol is not the right way to go. Here's another way for you to um, create something that can get people excited and get people people even talking about it and customizing and you know comparing what they're drinking and it, and it gives it more of the feeling of a party atmosphere. Um, and then finally, draw attention to it. So this is one thing we heard a lot when we started talking to operators and actually the folks at Farm Bar who were so nice to let us come in and talk about their mocktail program, they told us really the key is to make sure people know that you have it. Um, you know, Make sure it's featured prominently on the menu, or look at what Sonic is doing, look at what Starbucks is doing, look at what Duncan is doing and some of these other companies. A lot of limited time offers. That's how they're keeping it into people's um, awareness. They're uh, rotating things in. California Pizza, Ki Pizza Kitchen, which I showed you earlier, their examples, they're using limited time offers as a way to rotate and generate excitement and awareness of these items. Um, Social media is another great way to do it. Mocktails uh, photograph spectacularly. So you talk about getting people's attention, whether it's Instagram or Snapchat or Facebook or wherever it is folks are learning about your program. Make sure you're featuring these new exciting options for them through that social media. And then um, samples. 
we saw a lot of sampling going on when you start talking about mocktails. Because while a lot more people are familiar with mocktails than we've seen in the past, there's still some folks who aren't as familiar with the idea of what a mocktail is. And little sample cups go a long way. Um, we talked to uh, bars that told us they'll do that. They'll do little, little glasses for people to try. And, um, understand what it is and see, oh my gosh, this is delicious and I can't believe it doesn't have alcohol. That's a way of generating excitement. Or we've even seen Starbucks do that. They'll have trays of little little um, sample size cups out when people come in to try whatever their new beverage is. And 44% of consumers said, yeah, that is pretty effective. When there's a sample, I'm more likely to try ordering it after I've had that sample. Okay. Thank you so much for coming. <laughs>